Here we go, take two. Hi there, everyone. So, um, bad news for me, I guess, because I already recorded this whole video, went to edit it, found out there was no sound. So here we are again today, hopefully with a whole lot of different sound. We're here to talk about Q&A. Q&A is a British skincare brand that is fairly affordable. I've known them for years now. I cannot remember when they started selling in Czech Republic, but it's a while. And I've been just really liking some of their products, some of them not so much. So today we're gonna sit here and talk about all the stuff, you know, do a little deep dive and give you all the goods, all the swatches, all the close-ups, all the reviews on these things. So yeah, get ready, we're gonna get to it. All the products that I have here are cruelty-free and also vegan, just so you know. And their products are very nicely packaged. <laughs> They're also like one color. They're also built around one main ingredient. So you always have like a main theme to every single of these products, which is very nice. Another thing that I also appreciate is that their products have like this little skincare checklist where you have all different concerns and different skin types so you can kind of see if this should be good for your skin or not. Of course, this is not like 100%, you know, true, it doesn't have to be, but it's a nice helper if you really don't know what you're looking for. I'm gonna start off with cleansers and just a heads up, one of them I don't have here because I already threw it out after I filmed the first video and that kind of gives you the idea of how much I liked it. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start off with this one. This is the Grapefruit Cleansing Balm. And you may have heard me talk about this one not once. Like, I talked about this balm many times on my channel, I feel like. And it is a cleansing balm in a tube. I really like it. All these tube cleansers come in the same packaging, which is 125 milliliters. And I just love cleansers in a tube. I think it's very convenient, especially for a balm. So this one is supposed to, of course, remove makeup, dirt, SPF, anything you need from your face, including waterproof stuff. It smells awesome. It smells just like grapefruit, and I love that. And it is alcohol-free, but it is fragranced. You know, those essential oils happens. And you should just apply it like you usually would a balm. So you massage it onto dry skin, and then you emulsify it and wash it off or wipe it off with a warm cloth, up to you. Now, when it comes to the ingredients, you'd have some very nice oils in this. So you have almond oil, you have squalan, castor seed oil, cocoa butter, grapefruit seed oil, and also vitamin E. Personally, I really like cleansers with squalan and almond oil. I just find them very lightweight, not leaving a residue and just working really well. And that was also the case for this cleansing balm. Now, there was a little bit of a thing with this one. My experience overall with it has been very good. It's super effective. But the first tube I had was performing slightly different than the second one. I bought the first one here in Czech Republic and the second one in Lithuania. And I'm not sure if there could be any difference or if this was just more separated. But I feel like the newer one I had was a little bit more oily. It left more residue. It was less lightweight. So I'm not sure if there was some kind of shift in the formulation or something. However, the first tube I used up was amazing. It was my favorite cleanser ever. It didn't leave any residue, it, like it washed off completely and got rid of everything. This one does leave a little bit of residue, but I feel like it's also a bit more separated. So it really could be like a bad batch or something, but overall it's still very effective. And even though it leaves a little bit of a residue, you can just wash it off with your normal cleanser afterwards. So I would still recommend it as like a really good affordable cleansing balm that is also very conveniently packaged. Second cleanser I want to talk about mostly got me interested because of like the description. So this is their oat milk cream cleanser. And I used to have like a creamy cleanser from Balad that was actually amazing. So I really wanted to see if this is like anything similar to that. And in texture it definitely is. So this is like a very creamy cleanser. It's literally like a moisturizer that is supposed to again get rid of makeup and other stuff. It should be super gentle and formulated, especially to like sensitive skin. And yeah, it's just supposed to be a very, very gentle hydrating cleanser. You should massage it onto wet skin and wipe it off with a damp cloth, with, which is, yeah, that's usually what I do anyway. And this one is actually alcohol free and fragrance free, which is very nice since it's, you know, targeted more towards people with sensitive skin. When it comes to the ingredients, of course, you have the oats, aloe, almond oil, shea butter, apricot oil, cocoa butter, sunflower seed oil, and also linseed oil, vitamin E, and glycerin. So you can tell it's gonna be a little bit heavier based just on the ingredients. And it is almost like a whipped, creamy texture. 
Now, in my experience, this doesn't work well as a makeup remover. I tried to use it as like my first cleansing step and it just failed miserably. Like, I'm sorry, but this just doesn't do enough for me to really remove all my makeup, all my eye makeup, especially the mascara. Not even a normal one, let alone a waterproof one. So in that case, it was not for me. I didn't like it. But as a morning cleanser, this feels incredible because it doesn't strip your skin at all. It's really super gentle, super like soothing and hydrating. I loved it for that. So when I ran out of my Ren cleansing milk that I used in the morning, I started using this one and it's... Yeah, it's the same type of product. Super hydrating, super nourishing, really nice in the morning. So that's my use case for it right now. But as a standalone like cleanser, the first cleanser, nah, I don't think that's really the use case I wanna go for. Now the third cleanser that I don't have here, I'll give you the picture, but that I really did not like so much that it went straight to the bin after I filmed the review is the Peppermint Daily Cleanser. It was very similar to these two, it was just blue. And the thing with that one was that it was supposed to be like a super refreshing everyday cleanser. It was a gel one, like a clear gel, very standard. And it was supposed to be gentle. You should just emulsify it, apply it to the skin and get rid of everything. Plus being slightly woken up by the nice peppermint oil in there. So this one was only alcohol free. It was not fragrance free because of course, again, the essential oil. And when it comes to the ingredients, it had sodium cocoa sulfate in it. Also glycerin, allantoin, and the peppermint leaf oil. Immediately after I put it on, I knew there was something wrong because it was so bubbly and stripping. It was like washing your face with like normal hand soap. I, I hated it so bad. The peppermint, you can get used to it. I'm not the biggest fan of it in my skincare in general, but I feel like I could get over that. It, it, it was a nice texture. I could get over the peppermint, but this was just bad. It was just bubbles. It was very stripping to my skin and I really didn't like it. Every time I washed my face with it, it just went red and it just wasn't very pleasant at all. Just the texture, the whole formula of it, it just wasn't for me. And I read some reviews online and they seemed very happy with it for some reason and I couldn't understand the reviews that said that the skin was felt very hydrating and stuff. For me, it was one of the most stripping cleansers I've tried during the last years. And honestly, I think it's the sulfate in it. Like sulfate on a face is something that feels very 90s to me. And I don't know if it has been maybe reformulated, but the one that I had was definitely a no-go. Now, next I wanna talk about toners. I actually have two toners from QNA. They're both 100 milliliters, which is like a smaller amount, I feel, compared to other brands. But at the same time, they're not very expensive and it's a conveniently sized packaging too. So first I wanna talk about this one. This is the Niacinamide toner. You may or may not know that I love Niacinamide in my skincare routine, so I just had to have it. And great thing about both of these is that they're incredibly light. It's really just like putting water on your face. It's incredible, especially if you use different steps afterwards. It's very easy for them to then sink in without, you know, mushing together too much or just, you know, mixing weirdly, basically. Now, it's supposed to be like an everyday toner, calming redness and blemishes and minimizing your pores, together with all the other effects that Niacin might have. So, brightening up your skin, evening out your skin tone and stuff like that, which is awesome. This one is alcohol-free and also fragrance-free, which is really nice to hear. The ingredients, you have the niacinamide, glycerin, hyaluronic acid, aloe, Japanese honeysuckle extract, which is supposed to be anti-inflammatory, and also betaine. So... It is very basic, but even though it's supposed to be hydrating, it is still super lightweight and it just goes really well into any routine because it's super lightweight and very simple in ingredients. Now, the second toner that I have is the Green Tea Daily Toner. So again, it's supposed to be used on the daily. It's the same super watery, super lightweight texture, which I love. And this one is supposed to be more soothing and it's packed with antioxidants. Slightly different target group, but if you have very sensitive skin, I feel like you would really like this one. It should be specifically targeted towards stressed and sensitive skin, and it is also alcohol-free and fragrance-free, which, again, amazing. The ingredients, you have a green tea extract, you again have the Japanese honeysuckle, you have aloe, hyaluronic acid, glycerin, and Tasmanian pepperberry extract, which I didn't really know, but it's also supposed to be anti-inflammatory and an antioxidant that should help you soothe the skin. Now this one I have a very similar experience with. It's very nice, very easy to put into any routine and just a very good basic everyday toner. So basically if you are looking for toners that are very, very lightweight, just basically water, 
or you're starting off with toners and you're not sure what to pick, I feel like you cannot go wrong with these two. Because in my opinion, this would be great for almost any skin. And, you know, if you feel like you would benefit from niacinamide, you can pick the niacinamide one. If you feel like that's not really your thing, you can also go with the green tea one. And that one really feels like a super versatile toner. Now, the next category we have are eye products. I do have two. The first one I want to talk about is the seaweed peptide eye gel. I also spoke about this one on this channel before. And this is just one of my favorite, favorite eye products I have. Because it is very, very like multitasking and multi-purpose. It's supposed to be collagen building, hydrating, but also brightening. And it just should give you nice, firm and brighten up under eyes, which is exactly what I want from my eye gel. It is fragrance free. It is not alcohol free, which is a bit of a shame because why would you need to put alcohol into something that's so close to the eye? Anyway, it does contain peptides, glycerin, aloe, witch hazel, and also the mysterious alcohol. I don't even know which kind it is. But then we also have algae, kelp extract, thyme, and sea lavender. I had no idea there is a sea lavender. Anyway, it comes in a little tube of 15 milliliters. It's quite a generous amount because you only need a little bit at a time. And it is like this almost matte, very thick gel texture. Not thick, but it's not runny. It's just very like solid gel that is almost like mattifying but brightening at the same time. It's very hard to explain, but I feel like it makes my under eyes super like nice, like very brightened, but at the same time, it doesn't leave any like residue. It soaks in really fast. It has all the good properties at the same time, even though some of them seem to be very like contradictory, but they're not. In my opinion, this is one of the best eye gels I've ever used. And I really feel like it's super versatile because you can use it both in the morning because it's not like too watery or leaving too much of a residue so you can put makeup on it easily and during the night because it's enough hydrating to really keep you through the night and hydrate those under eyes. So this is like one of my favorite things and I travel with this a lot too. So yeah, definitely a great recommendation. Now the second eye product I have is the Caffeine Eye Serum. This also comes in a 15 milliliter tube, but it does have a little rollerball on the end, which is actually very good. Like this is a good packaging because it works super well. It doesn't get stuck on your under eye. It doesn't pinch you, but it's not letting out too much product at once. So yeah, thumbs up on that. Really well done. Now, this one is supposed to reduce your under eye circles, of course, as caffeine usually does. It should also help with any signs of aging and wrinkles. Now, it should be very suitable for mature skin and it is fragrance free. Again, I think there is alcohol in it. I don't know why. Now, when it comes to the ingredients, we have caffeine, we have green tea, betaine, cucumber water, which is kind of a common ingredient in like hydrating under eye things. And then we have collagen, pomegranate extract, and different fermented filtrates together with the glycerin. So good, again, nicely hydrating, a lot of good stuff in this. In my experience, it is very lightweight and it sinks in really fast. And I usually like to use it more during the night and also with something else on top. So I would usually put this on and then put like a more heavy cream or balm on top. You get that occlusive layer and it soaks in like for a longer period of time a little bit more effectively, which may not be like the best use case, but I like doing it that way. And I'm not sure it helps with the dark circles. I don't feel like anything really helps with the dark circles unless you sleep well, but it definitely does have the brightening and the hydrating effect, which I personally like. And I wouldn't say it's bad. I don't like it as much as the other one though. So I would probably go for the eye gel, but this one also okay, but just don't expect miracles. Now we're getting to the serums. I have four different skin serums here today. I'm gonna start from the most basic one. So of course we have a hyaluronic acid serum. All of these serums actually come in the same packaging pretty much. You always have a glass bottle, 30 milliliters, three have a dropper, one has a pump, so there's that. This one is like a super basic hydrating hyaluronic acid serum. What's in it is basically just hyaluronic acid and glycerin. It is fragrance free. And in my experience, it's just a very basic hydrating serum. It is a little bit on the thicker side, but you need just very little. I wouldn't worry about the amount you're using because a little goes a very long way. But if you apply a bit too much, it can get a little bit sticky, a little bit harder to sink in. So don't go too heavy on it, but it is a very effective and, you know, just as affordable as other alternatives. But I like it as well. The next serum that I want to talk about is the Zinc PCA serum. I never had like a full on zinc serum before and I gotta say that it's like surprisingly effective. It, it is supposed to help minimize your pores, fight blemishes, but also should not be drying because zinc is usually like known to be a very drying ingredient. You can use it as a treatment on its own on just the spots or places where you really need the help or you can just use it overall as a serum. 
that's how I usually use it. And this one is alcohol free and also fragrance free. Now you do have the zinc PCA, which is the main ingredient, the name of the serum, obviously. So it has to be important, right? It is supposed to balance your skin oils, reduce any redness and also help with pore minimization, which are great news. Those are all the things I love. But besides that, you also have reishi and shiitake mushroom extracts, which are supposed to have some anti-aging properties as well as vegetable collagen, different fermented ingredients and glycerin. So you can see there we're trying to make this like a non-drying serum and not just pure zinc, which is nice. My experience is that it really doesn't dry up your skin. It is a similar texture to the hyaluronic acid serum, so it's fine, it sinks in pretty fast. This one is a little bit thinner than the hyaluronic acid serum, but it still sinks in really well and you don't need all that much. Now, I feel like I use this mostly when my skin is looking really bad and also when my skin is looking very uneven. Because sometimes I get like these little red spots and red patches that almost look like some kind of undercover pimples, but they're not. And they're just making my skin look super weird and like splotchy. And I hate that. <laughs> and this is one of the products I usually use when I start seeing that. And it helps. It actually helps a lot. I would definitely recommend it if you have a particular skin type that could benefit from zinc. I think this is a very nice formulation. Because it really doesn't dry out your skin. And I can find a difference on myself. So for me, definitely recommendation if you're looking for like a nice zinc serum. The third one that I have, I've been using fairly for like a short period of time, but is there azelaic acid balancing serum? I've been loving azelaic acid for the similar reason. It really helps me even out my skin when it's not looking great. It is supposed to give you a smooth and clear complexion, which I would, yeah, I would say kind of does. And it should also get rid of stressed and congested skin. This one is again fragrance free and alcohol free. And besides azelaic acid, there's also aloe, zinc PCA, glycerin and different seed extracts in the formula. Also some antioxidants. So this one is a little bit different in texture. It's very lightweight, but it's almost like milky or creamy. It is very different to the Geek and Gorgeous as a like acid serum that I really like. That one I still like better, but I feel like this one is a nice alternative. And the addition of zinc makes me think that maybe it's more effective at really evening out my skin tone and really making it, you know, the nice, bright, fresh. I really can feel that when I use it. I like that even though it is a more milky texture, it still absorbs really well and layers really well with other things and it doesn't irritate my skin at all. So if you are looking for some affordable azelaic acid serum, this is actually a pretty good one. I feel like azelaic acid is not very common with affordable brands yet, so it's always nice to have like a recommendation like this, I think. And last but not least, this is probably my favorite serum, it's their peptide serum. And this was like the first time I ever encountered peptides. It was in this serum years back. I fell in love immediately because my skin never felt softer. So let's talk about it, okay? It is an anti-aging water-based serum. The main thing of this one is that it's supposed to be super lightweight, unlike other different anti-aging serums, which I can definitely confirm. It should absorb really fast and give you a nice glow, which again, confirmation 100%. And this one is also alcohol-free and fragrance-free. The ingredients, you have peptides, you also have magnesium PCA, which is an anti-fatigue ingredient and hyaluronic acid. So for me, this is a great nighttime serum because I get both my anti-aging ingredients, my hydration, and I can just, you know, use one serum if I'm in a hurry and be good to go. Also, I can combine it with different like targeted treatments and it's still just very nice and versatile. And because it's super lightweight, you can put other stuff on top and not really worry about how the formulations are going to mix. And yeah, it was just historically, this is like my third or fourth bottle I don't even know anymore. And I love it so much. Really, I started noticing that when I use this at night, my skin in the morning is just beautiful and plump and hydrated and so soft and just so nice. So definitely a big recommendation for this one. This is definitely my favorite out of all of those. Yeah, now listen, we have two moisturizers and we're good to go. So the first one is the Ginger Root Daily Moisturizer. I hate this one with passion. I'll tell you why in a minute. But it is supposed to be like a moisturizer full of natural actives you can use on the daily that should have non-sticky formula and just, you know, nourish your skin and make it nice and hydrated. What could go wrong, right? The moisturizers come in a 75 milliliter tube. Again, I love the tube. I just don't really love what's in it. Um, this one is alcohol free, but it's sadly not fragrance free. And what do we have in it is the ginger root extract. We also have sunflower seed oil, grapeseed oil, allantoin, aloe, jojoba oil, vitamin E, and some ingredients derived from coconut, such as coconut alcohol and cocoa glucoside. I wasn't sure if these are the exact ingredients that could be troubling for you if you are sensitive to coconut, but I think it's always better to mention them. So this moisturizer, 
Like this is so thick, I cannot even use it as a night cream. The formula is almost whipped and it really doesn't want to absorb. Like you have to massage it into the face for minutes to make it like not make you look like you have white paint on your face. I hate it so much. The smell is so strong. It just smells like you went to the supermarket and buried your face in the box with ginger root. Like, no, just no, I just don't like it. Nothing about the experience of using this moisturizer was pleasant. Was it okay? It was okay, but like, I have like 50 other moisturizers that do the same thing or do it better and I just like them way more. Maybe if you really enjoy sniffing ginger all night or just really thick creams, you would like it, but I'm sorry, so not from me, just so not from me. And the last product we have is also a moisturizer and it's the Hyaluronic Acid Daily Moisturizer. Again, it's supposed to be amazing, it's supposed to be for everyday use and this one is supposed to be more deeply hydrating, making your skin like nice and soft and hydrated and youthful and stuff. This one is fragrance free, sadly not alcohol free. And when it comes to the ingredients, I really like that you have both hyaluronic acid and polyglutamic acid in it, together with rice bran extract, which is supposed to be brightening, soothing and hydrating, and then also glycerin, aloe, grapeseed oil and jojoba seed oil. So this one, you can already kind of tell from the ingredients even that it should be a little bit more lightweight and a bit more hydrating. And it's definitely true, like the texture is different, but it's still very, very thick. Like I cannot use this as a day cream because I would have to spend two minutes massaging it in my skin. Good news is that this one actually does eventually absorb and it doesn't take like super long, but I still use it mostly as a night cream. I really like how my skin feels when I wake up, like it feels great, it's a great moisturizer, but it's still a little too thick. Like if I'm gonna call something a daily moisturizer, I want it to absorb fast, I want it to be like, you know, just this is not it, it's just not doing it for me. Even though it is definitely a better one than the ginger root one, it's still not like my favorite. I do use it for the nighttime when my skin is very dry because I know it's going to give it a little pick me up and I don't want to get rid of it, but it's definitely not like up there with my favorite moisturizers. And that was the last product. So as you can see, the cleansers are a bit so-so and so are the moisturizers. The rest of the products I feel like are amazing, the quality is great, they perform really well, but for the moisturizers I could really, I wanna see something different, you know, I wanna see something fun, like different cream textures, like maybe like a gel moisturizer, maybe something a bit more, I don't know, I just feel like all the moisturizers they have, and I've also tried the collagen one, are just super heavy, like unnecessarily thick. You know, it's not like 2002 anymore, we can do some different moisturizers now. And the cleansers, I like the balm. I don't mind the oat milk one, but it's not my favorite. And the peppermint one was just a disaster. I just really hope I had some really old formulation. Let's just say that. But besides that, I feel like all the other products are great. I would definitely recommend some of the serums if you want like a specifically targeted serum for something. Also the eye care is great if you want to begin with some eye care and you don't really know where to start. And the toners are amazing. The toners are really probably the most beginner friendly toners I've ever had. So, you know, like do what you want, but I would definitely not sleep on this brand because they're doing many, many things right. Some not so right for me, but many, many things very, very right. So yeah, I hope you liked this deep dive into q and I hope my sound finally got recorded. And yeah, if you want me to do a deep dive into different skincare brands, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to see more videos where I talk about skincare, you can check out the playlist somewhere up here. See ya!